Okay, so I'm going to give you an insight into how to do some really complex queries. Uh, we're going to do a couple different ones here. We're going to be getting some information to be able to display this table here. This is a JQ grid. Uh, you can check it out uh, here. Here's the grid API. Um, we're going to kind of export some data from the SQL query. So we want to know the, and these are apps by a developer. That's what this, this category is. We want to know the ID of the app, the name of the app, the, the number of views that the app has had, the download count, the sales count, the donations count, every unique customer, because a customer can download it twice, and the royalty due. Okay, <clears throat> that's what we want to know from this data. So in this, we're going to learn um, how to do joins, left joins, and per se, we're going to learn what group by is. We're going to learn how to do counts, sum, and even count distinct, all in the same line. Okay, we're also going to be able to do some math right in the query in case we need to. So let's get started right in the query. I'm going to let you know the tables that we're going to need. Uh, the admin table has information about... Um, about developers. That's actually the developers table. It's not renamed. Customers table has information about customers. Uh, we've got the orders table, which is information about an order. The orders products table, which actually has information about an order per product. Okay, so this ties to the products table, which is right here. Here's the products table, which has ties to the product description table because there's not all the information that we need okay in the products table some of that information is in the products description table okay so that's how those relationships work and we're gonna form those here okay so the first thing we want is the ID of the app so we're gonna say select and what do we want to get well we want to get the app ID which is in this case a products underscore ID okay and that's gonna be products underscore ID from the products table okay and we're gonna say where okay so now we want to exclusively say where and in the products table there's a field called owner so products dot products owner okay now if you're used to writing SQL and you're not used to um, having this dot here the dot is there because we're gonna have lots of joins in this statement and if you have two tables that you're joining together that have the same name such as their ID that you're joining on that will be called ambiguous and SQL will throw an error I'll explain that more in a second, but just know products.productsowner. And you know what? Let's do that in a second. Anyway, you know, we'll just do it products owner. Okay? And that's going to say products owner equals, and we're just going to use a test number here of a developer. Okay? And we're just going to run that. And that we have products owner in where clause. Uh, where products, because it's product owner. Okay. So now we've got four products from this from this developer okay so now we want to know the name of those apps right well the name is actually in the products description table okay so I can't just do so actually well the products name is called products products name okay which is found in the products description table not the products table okay so I only have the products table I don't have the products description table so we need to get it in order to get it we're going to do something called a left join okay and a left join basically says okay what field on this table that I currently have which is called products ID matches the field on products descriptions these two fields match and what a left join will do is it will take this this row okay so let's go flip over to here let's say products ID 120 is what we want it'll take every column in here and bring it together with every column on here okay so it'll bring all those together it'll join all those columns together and give you all those results now you can see that there's a problem if uh, we have the same thing so there's products ID here there's also products ID here so how does it know which one to get which is why we're gonna have an error in a second but in order to do the left join what we're gonna do is we're gonna say from left from products left join products underscore description okay now we're gonna join on what field are we joining on because we have to tell it and that's gonna be the products description table dot products ID and that's gonna be equal to products products dot products ID okay those that's the join so if we run this okay we get an error called products ID is ambiguous and that's because both products and product description both have the field products ID so it does not know which one to pick so we have to do it by putting the, the, the table name and a dot in front of it okay and then this is going to be that guy okay you could do either one so this will work okay so this works great you could because they both have it you could switch products to products description right here okay it does not matter 
they both work just fine, okay? Because they both have it. But now we're telling it which one to get. Again, similarly, we shouldn't be writing products owner here. It's not ambiguous, but it's good practice to not do that, okay? So just always put the table name in front of it, okay? It doesn't need to be there, but we're putting it there anyway. So let's talk about um, how to get the view count. Well, the view count is literally just a table on the product description table. So I'm just going to copy that over from my good query and just put that in here, and that will now give us. Um, an error because I ended it with a comma and I shouldn't have. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our products view. Nothing special there. So let's learn how to count. Okay, so we want to count orders underscore products. Okay, so basically what we want to know with this count is we want to know how many downloads a particular app has. So if we go to our orders products table, okay, a single line item is one download. Okay, so we're going to get all the items that have this particular product ID. That's going to give us all these results. And we want to count how many there are that have this. Okay? But before we can use this table, we have to join on this table. So we're going to do another left join on the product on the orders underscore products table. Okay, on. Okay. And now how do we want to join? Well, when it, both columns have a products ID. So we're going to do orders underscore products dot products ID, and that's going to be equal to, again, we have two tables now that have products ID. We can use either one. Products is shorter to write, so I'll write products dot products ID. Now, when we do this, it's going to join, and it's actually going to bring us every single row, because it can join. When it joins, it's going to get all these matches, which is going to mess up our data set, because if I do this, Look at this. We've got tons and tons and tons and tons of that kind of data. So to fix that, we're going to use a SQL command called group by. So what we have is we have 153, 153, 153, 153, 153, 153. So we want to group by this number. Okay, we don't want to see that. Okay, so we're going to say group by um, products dot products ID. Okay, and that's going to bring them together and do that. Now imagine that all those are still here. And we can actually count those. So if we come up to our SQL statement, we can do something called count, okay? And what we want to count is from that table, orders underscore products dot, we want to count all the products IDs, okay? And this is going to happen before it groups them all together, okay? Because it's, it's earlier in the SQL, it's going to do this before it brings them together as one. So that means all those results will still be there, so we can count them. So products ID, okay? And if we run that, it says count, so it was able to count how many of each there were. Again, we don't want it to call it count, we want to call it um, as, you know, uh, download count. Okay, and run that. So now, download count equals all these. So you understand why this happened. When we joined on this, it gave us all those results. Okay, so we grouped by the product ID, which was the thing that was being repeated, that sifted them all together and only showed us one of each. Okay, but before we did that, we counted how many of each there were. Okay, so now let's learn a summation, uh, which is a little bit different. So the next thing we want to do is find out the, we want to basically find out the total cost. So to do that, we're going to go to our orders products table and look at our look at our content. We've got a final price. Okay, so if we get all of these, just like we did, same exact thing, we're going to get all of these. Okay, to find out how much was made off of all of these. Okay, we're just going to combine all the prices together. So all these are zero, but if we come down to something that's not zero, um, like this guy right here. So these are all these 153s. All of these right here are the 153s. To get how much was made in total off of this one app, obviously we would we would add all these numbers together. Okay? That's how you that's how you figure out how much was made out of all of these. Okay? So we can do that just like we did the count, only we're gonna do the sum. So sum orders underscore products dot um, final price okay and that's going to be as um, revenue we'll call it okay we run that so that adds up how much that, that basically adds up all those together for that particular app and again we're not seeing them all because we're doing the group by the last complicated thing we're going to do is do a count distinct okay now why are we doing count distinct so let's what we want to figure out is who bought what app. So to figure that out, we actually need the orders table, which is, if I could spell correctly, which is, we need the orders table because there's the customer on the orders table. So we need to know who bought it. Okay. So if we um, go back to our query 
and we write uh, if we do a count uh, if we do count order well actually first and foremost we can't use the orders table until we have the orders table so all we have is products products descriptions and orders products so we need to do a left join orders on okay and to do that we we know that the orders products table has the order ID that it came from so orders um, underscore products dot orders ID equals orders dot orders ID and where am I getting that from well I know that on the orders table here's orders ID and on the orders products table here's the orders ID okay that's what I'm joining on so once we do that let's run this okay and it says uh, we have an error because uh, I probably okay so there shouldn't be that comma there again so now I run that so we're okay right now um, everything's fine the problem that we have is that well that's not a problem now that we've got our orders table which is great now we want to count our customers so we can say count okay so count um, orders dot uh, customers ID okay and we're gonna say as customers and we run that and that gives us our customers now why are these statistics misleading because a customer can buy an app multiple times okay we're already doing group by by the products so now we have multiple customers in each result so to actually amend that you can actually select distinct customers as in it's gonna count all the orders customers but only count the ones that are different from each other okay and that's really what a developer wants to know so we're gonna say count distinct and that's another SQL call count distinct and take a look at these numbers we have 1426 180 and if I run this again those numbers go down dramatically and that's because we had multiple people multiple of the same person buy the app multiple times and we don't want those statistics we want to only know who bought what separately okay so there you go that's how you do um, selects and counts and sums and count distincts as well as left joins and group by um, again if I didn't mention the reason we're doing left join and not join is because left join leaves empty results in case they were there Okay, so see how revenue is null right here. If I were to get rid of, uh, I think if I were to get rid of make them all joins, um, if any of the fields are null, then they won't join. So if I do that and run it, you can see that that field is now gone because join ignores when a field is null. That's why we want left join because we want to know when a field was null. We don't care, we don't want it to go away. We want to know it. So we do use left join and not join, and that gives us our empty result. So there you go, complicated SQL queries.